Welcome to this edition of the BRS Insider. I'm sitting down with head women's basketball coach Chad Molson. Coach, thank you for joining us. You bet. Thanks for having me. We'll, we'll go back to Saturday, a 58-43 win over Clark. You guys forced 28 turnovers in that game. Talk about that. It's a very, very good defensive game for us. Uh, I thought our intensity from the start all the way to the end was really, really strong. Um, yeah, anytime you force 28 turnovers, I think we had 16 steals in there or something like that as well. So we were really getting a lot of turnovers leading to opportunities to go down and score. Um, but I thought our defense and our rebounding was really, really big in that game. And Kristen did what Kristen does. She scored 21 in that game. Talk about the role she's taken this year. Well, she's she's our leader, of course, and uh, she was that way last year as well. And, uh, you know, somebody we look to to make big buckets, and she's capable of doing that, and uh, she's been doing that quite quite a bit. So uh, um, the other thing we have her doing is defending a lot on the other team's best guards. So she's, she's doing it at both ends of the floor for us right now. You guys went to CMU last night, an 86-79 loss. Let it half time. They came out just unconscious in the third quarter. So take us through it. Yeah, you know, uh, we, we were playing back and forth. I thought the whole first first half, um, you know, the, the transition game got to us uh, in the second, uh, third quarter, second half. They started uh, attacking us a little bit better in transition there, got some open shots, and uh, we struggled a little bit on, on containing them. Um, and on the other side of it, we were putting the ball in the basket. You know, I think we had one field goal in the third quarter, so it's hard to st stay close there, but uh, we did make free throws. And then we, we were able in the fourth quarter to cut it to two. So um, I was proud of the way our ladies kept fighting and, and did fold. and. Uh, you know, fought all the way to the end, so that was that was a good sign. Kristen and Kayla both had 18. Talk about what Kayla's done here this past month. She's really stepped into a bigger role, and she's come up really big for you guys. She has. You know, uh, she's uh, you know, stepped up big in that inside position for us as a post, and she's been dealing with an injury all semester, but it doesn't seem to bother. And uh, she's been doing a great job. She's been scoring double digits almost every night for us, and uh, doing a great job rebounding as well. And takes a lot of charges. I think she might be one of the leaders in the, in the league and taking charges. And uh, she does a good job of that for us as well. And I forgot to mention it, but Natalie Samarin in that game against Clark had a double-double. Talk about what she's done backing up Kayla. It's been good. You know, she she came off an injury all first semester, really didn't play at all until after Christmas, and uh, and, and each game seems to be getting better and better. You know, she brings a lot of size at 6'2 that uh, can defend and rebound underneath, and uh, uh, she has some nice moves to the basket. And I thought in that game against Clark, both of our posts did a nice job at negating their post. Uh, you know, their post led the league in rebounding as well as uh, block shots, and I think we only held, we held her to two offensive boards. So we did a good job of boxing her out and keeping her off the backs. Talk about the season as a whole so far. It's been a very, very good year for you guys. Before going into last night, had a 10-game winning streak going. Just talk about the season as a whole. Yeah, I mean, it's been, a, it's been a good year. I mean, we played a, a lot of good teams in early in uh, November, and I think that's helped us for conference. Uh, we played a lot of ranked teams, did pretty well against them. Uh, this team's been dealing with a lot of things, though, over the course of the season, injuries and, and different things throughout the year. And uh, But you know, they just continue to fight and continue to stick together and continue to believe in each other, and that's been the key all along. And, uh, and uh, um, you know, continue to do that and continue to do well. Conference standings right now, four-way tie at the top of the division at 8-2 and two with M&U, CMU, and Baker. I guess talk about that and where you and, see that going. And, right now. and one more on the north at William Penn at 8-2 and two as well. So you got five teams at 8-2 and two right now. So uh, I think we're getting ready to go through the second round of, of the conference. So, uh, you know, it's anybody's game. You know, you got uh, a lot of good, strong teams there at the top. And... Uh, um, you know, you got to be ready to play every single night. And Saturday, you guys get m at home this time. Seven-point loss the first time around. What did you learn that first time that can help you going on Saturday? Well, you know, in that first game, we, we got in a big hole early in the first half. Uh, I think Crystal Murphy was in foul trouble, played three minutes in the first half and didn't score at all, and then comes out second half, scores 17. So if she can stay on the floor, that'd be nice. Um, but uh, we also, uh, you know, I mean, you learn a lot playing one time, and now you get to come back to our house. And I think we're a different team then, so, you know, we'll work on some things to, to get ready. But uh, our team's excited for the opportunity to, to play them again. You guys are bringing back a couple teams on Saturday to honor them. Go ahead and talk about those two teams. Yep, we're going to uh, be like a recognition of our 1998 team and our 2008 women's basketball teams. Both of them won conference championships, both qualified for the national tournament. And uh, uh, we've got several members of both teams coming back and their families, which would be nice to recognize them at halftime of the men's game. Uh, and then we're going to have a dinner with, uh, with them and their families and our current players uh, right after that. So it'll be a nice uh, nice time to recognize. It's been 20 years and 10 years since since those two teams won conference titles. So it'll be nice to, to be able to honor them uh, on Saturday. All right, Coach, thank you very much right. for joining us. Best of luck on Saturday. I appreciate it. Thanks to Coach. Head women's basketball coach Chad Folsom on the BRS and Insider. A wise man once said, the world offers you comfort. 
But you were not made for comfort. You were made for greatness. Discover what you were made for. Benedictine College, where greatness begins. Back on the BRS and Insider, I'm sitting down with Benedictine College men's basketball coach Ryan Moody. Coach, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Dakota. We'll go back to Saturday at 78-77 win over Clark, a very highly con- competitive game from beginning to end. Yeah, it was. Uh, two two good teams, I think, and Clark, uh, you know, their offense is a much better than their record gives them credit for it. Uh, you know, they're averaging 88 points a game or something, and I thought that we did a really good job the first half of that game of finding our defensive identity again. Um, really, I think we held them to 29, 30 points and just did a really good job, and then it kind of got away from us in the second half. We, we built a lead, um, maybe got a little content, lost a little bit of our defensive uh, edge, and they banged in some shots, and all of a sudden now you're in a possession-by-possession possession game the last few minutes. And uh, I thought our guys did a really good job of digging in, sharing the basketball, um, finding a way to win that game and, and things hadn't gone our way you know the previous game and you know just kind of letting that go and moving on to this one so it was, it was a good win for us and talk about that three for Adam Cutney there at the end was that how you drew it up or yeah no I wish we could take total credit um, but no that was the players just just doing their thing we did have a play coming out of that uh, that timeout where we run a little bit of action to get Kevin kind of going downhill with some choices for some of his teammates, and uh, that didn't work. So at that point, our guys are just playing and trusting on the things, the fundamentals that, that we work on and their instincts. And, you know, Kevin did a great job of drawing two on a ball screen, draw, drew his guy and Adam's guy, and, and was really unselfish and threw it back. Adam 0 for 3 from 3, 1 for 6 from the field going into that shot and sticks it. And I think that the best thing about that whole series was watching the reaction of the bench. You know, we, we, we've had a hard time this year sometimes with adversity and body language and some of those other things. And to watch that bench explode when Adam hit that shot um, was a really good thing and a positive sign that, that this group is still ready for a fight no matter what happens. You guys went to Fayette last night, played the number nine team in the country, got down big early on in the second half and made a very valiant effort to get back into that one came up just a little bit short. Yeah, you know, it's hard to play on the road wherever you go, let alone a team that's playing like CMU. And, and they have three losses on the year, really good guards. And I thought our guys, would by far and away, have were the most dialed in and most focused um, on the game plan for this game than any other since the break. Uh, I thought we did a really good job defensively both man-to-man and zone of identifying what we needed to do and, and kind of taking Central out of their comfort zone. Unfortunately, the defense was pretty good for about 35 minutes, but the O, we just couldn't get it going in the first half. I mean, we had some some bad turnovers, some some turnovers where typically it's a guy who catches it and lays it in, it goes through his hands and out of bounds. You know, we, we missed some shots, and we were just kind of in a rut. Got down, you know, I think 16, 17 points. Um, ended up battling back in the second half, like you said, cut it to one, had three different chances, three different possessions to take the lead um, down one and just could not get over that hump. And uh, and then they banged in a shot and all of a sudden it's a free throw shooting contest. But but I am proud of, again, um, a little bit more grit, a little bit more resolve. Uh, body language was good. We fought through adversity. These are all really positive signs going into the last nine or ten games here of the year. And a big part of that comeback last night was Thomas O'Connor scored 22 points, hit six threes. Talk about what he meant to the team last night. Well, Tom can really shoot it. I mean, everybody in the league knows it. Everybody in the nation should know it by now. Super consistent. Um, same shot every time kind of guy. And, and he was feeling it. We were trying to get him the ball, give a lot of credit to his teammates, trying to find him, especially during that run. It rubbed off. Um, you know, Kevin made a couple. Grant made one. I mean, things kind of started to snowball there a little bit. And then that opens up even the rim because now all of a sudden the other team's scrambling to get to these shooters. So Tom is a, is a gym rat. He's in here working on it all the time. He's got a very consistent shot, and we know what he can do. And hopefully that's a good sign for him moving forward because, you know, I think after last night's game, we've got, we've got five guys averaging double figures on this team. So if we can just figure out the D a little bit, you know, I think we've got a chance. You went big last night. You had both Christian and Adam in the game at the same time. I don't see that very often. What was your thought behind that? Well, there was even times where we had Boris and Christian, Boris and Adam out there at the same time, and, and we were really big. Well, we went to the zone, and we knew that we could play those two guys, those kind of guys together um, matchup-wise with the zone, and it gave us a better rebounding advantage, especially when we've got a big guy you know, standing there right in the middle of the floor. Um, I thought it gave us a little bit of an offensive advantage, too, because they have to account for it. You know, um, they, they have to make sure that if those guys get a touch, something happens, whether it's a double, a choke, whatever it may be. And we made we made some shots because of that, um, where two were on the ball and we got a kick out. So 
you know, I, I mean, I think you'll see a little bit of that moving forward. It's not necessarily uh, too, too different. I mean, we've been playing kind of that rotation the whole way. Um, but we, we need to work on getting, uh, you know, keep getting those guys in there and being able to work with that zone a little bit to give us a change of tempo. And that's really what that was, a change of tempo. You guys are sitting at 11 and 10 right now, 5 and 5 in the heart. What are your thoughts on the season as a whole so far? I mean, I'm, um, no one's happy that we're, you know, grinding here since Christmas. We, we just haven't had, I, I haven't had a ton of success. I mean, I think we're maybe two and six or maybe, you know, maybe I might I think that's the record since break. But uh, um, this group fights. Uh, we've had our struggles. Like I said, you know, defensively, the, 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 the difference between the first semester and the second semester is pretty glaring. And so the guys understand that. We're, we're grinding on it every day in practice. Um, we've got good buy-in. And, and I think we've got some really good attitudes. And that's the big thing. I mean, this, this, this league, I think there's, I don't know how many, I think there's four of us that are five and five and one that's just right above with three win, three losses. I mean, I, I don't think that this is just going to be something that, you know, solves itself in the next week or two. Like it's going to go down to the end of who's finishing one, two, three, and um, who wins the South, who wins the North. So it's a, I think it's a really good sign for the league. Um, but it's a grind. I mean, every single night will be a competitive game, and I just don't know. you you got to be ready to go on both ends. So I, I, I'm, I'm happy with where we're at. We're getting better. Um, we're definitely not going backwards, and that's that's a good thing in late January, February. You touched on that, sitting second in the Heart South, three teams tied at five and five. What are your thoughts on the division and how divisions and how that's worked out? You know, I mean, the divisions are a scheduling model more than anything this year. You know, in the end, at the end of the year, when they decide who's going to go to the national tournament, it's going to come down to overall records and overall finish in the league, not not depending on north or south. But, uh, you know, I, I do think that the, that the scheduling part of it worked. Um, I, I'm not a big fan. I've said that a couple of times, but it is what it is. But, you know, we got to play who we got in front of us. And. Um, it's going to be a, it's going to be a grind. We had nine regular season games left and, and I'm, we're excited because we were showing signs of getting better. I can't really tell you what anybody else is doing, but, um, we we see the results, uh, on the film and what we're doing in practice. And I'm excited for that. Okay. You guys get another shot at MNU. You took them down 90, 79 the first time around. What did you learn from that first matchup? Well, I mean, with with Mid America, I mean, your first your first thing you have to stop is their transition. Um, they're they're so good out in the full court and on makes misses, they continually put pressure on you. If you're not if you're not dialed into getting back, you're going to have problems all night. Um, you have to stay aggressive. You know, on offense, you can't try to play the game slow because you're slowing them down. You have to stay in attack mode, and we did a really good job of executing down there. One of our best games of the year. Clearly, we shared the ball. Guys made shots. It was an unselfish game offensively and defensively we were able to get back and get them slowed down. So, um, you know, we're, we're going to look for that again. Hopefully uh, we've got a, a good memory of that and a short-term memory of some of the past few games in defense and keep scrapping together and get closer and closer to a 40-minute defensive game. And, you know, this is, this is going to be a challenge. I mean, they're a very good team. They've added a couple of players um, over the semester due to some eligibility things, and I think that they're probably in a better place. So we need to be, we need to be at full strength. All right, Coach, thank you very much for Thanks joining us. Best of luck on Saturday. Bennington College men's basketball coach Ryan Moody on the BRSN Insider.